Hello, my name is Michał Męciński. I am the author of Webishes. I would like to invite you to a short presentation of the new features in version 1.1. But if you are new to Webishes, you will also learn about it from this presentation. Let's start with a short introduction to Webishes. Basically, it's a system for tracking information. This information can include bugs, tasks, support tickets, requests, orders, and anything that you need to keep track of. WebIssues has a very flexible system of issue types, and it comes with a few predefined types, but you can customize it according to your needs. WebIssues supports team collaboration by providing communication and access to information in a single place. The main part of the system is the WebIssues server. It's a web application which can be installed on any host with PHP and either MySQL, Postgres or SQL Server, so both Linux and Windows servers are supported. You can access the system using a web browser like most traditional issue tracking applications. However, one very distinct feature of web issues is the desktop client which works natively on Windows, Linux and Mac OS. The desktop client makes using the system very comfortable and efficient. It can be compared to email. You can use a web interface to access your email from anywhere you want, but you can also install a client application like Outlook to make it easier to work with your emails. In fact, web issues actually looked very similar to an email client. Finally, web issues is a free open source software and it's licensed under the GPL license. So what's new in version 1.1? I will show you the most important features in a moment, but the list includes the ability to create issue and project descriptions with simple text formatting, better email integration, including creating issues via email, the global lists of issues, which make it easier to work when you have lots of projects and folders, and read-only anonymous access for unregistered users. Let's take a look at version 1.1 of WebIssues. First, I will log into the web interface. On the left, you can see the tree of projects and folders. You can use projects to control permissions for various parts of the system and folders can contain various types of issues, for example, bugs and tasks. When I click on a folder, the list of issues will be displayed, and if I click on an issue, the details, description, and full history of the issue will be displayed. Now let's take a look at the new All Projects node in the tree on the left. It displays all existing issue types. When I click on a list, it will display all issues of that type, from all projects and folders. Sometimes you need to have many projects to control access to your system for various customers or contractors, and jumping between folders to find the information you need is very annoying. Now you have access to everything in one place. You can still use views in the global lists. For example, you can display only active bugs or active bugs which are currently assigned to you. You can also use simple search to find the issue that you need by name or any text attribute. This is how the web interface looks like, so now let's take a look at the desktop client. It already remembers the address and credentials of the server, so I just have to double click this bookmark to open the connection. The user interface is very similar. You have a project tree on the left, the list of issues, and the details of the selected issue. 
If you have lots of issues, you can simply scroll down to see them. You don't have to go page by page like in the web client. Quick search works dynamically as you type. You can use contextual menus and you can open multiple windows, for example to compare two issues side by side. If you work with web issues a lot, you will find the desktop client much easier to use than the web interface. Let me create a new issue in the bugs folder. I will enter the name. Now the initial values of attributes Each issue type can have a different set of attributes, which can be text, drop-down lists, numbers, dates and so on. In version 1.1 you can also type a description directly when creating an issue. You can use simple markup for various formatting, for example a bullet list, bold or italic text. You can use code tags for snippets of code or log files or any text that shouldn't be formatted. You can use links to website and also to other issues by simply typing the issue ID. Let's see the preview of the description. and add the issue. Here you can see the history of the issue. You can add file attachments and comments and you can modify the attributes. As you can see in this example all changes are recorded in the history. In version 1.1 you can now easily reply to someone's comment and it's automatically quoted. There's the link to the original comment. When someone else adds a new issue, it has a yellow envelope. And modified issues have a green envelope. In addition, all new and modified issues can appear in the tree of the desktop client. You can configure alerts that you want to be displayed for each folder. Since version 1.1, the administrator can create a public alert for all members of the project. The alert can be based on any existing view and in addition you can configure it to send emails whenever an issue is added or modified. You can select specific days and hours for each alert. Both personal and public alerts also work in the global lists of issues, so now this is a really powerful tool. Web issues can also be configured to receive emails. This can be extremely useful if you have a service desk system, so all emails are automatically registered as issues. Here's an example of an issue created by using email. You can see the headers, text and attachments. It's possible to receive emails from people who are not registered WebIssues users. What's more, the sender is automatically subscribed to the issue and he receives notifications whenever the issue is modified. For example, when the support person adds a comment asking for more information. The sender can then respond to this notification email and this response is also added to the history. 
This is a very powerful mechanism of communication. In some cases, you may want to make some information available for everyone without a web issues account. This only works in the web client, so let's switch back and log out. When the anonymous access is enabled by the system administrator, anyone can simply enter the system without logging in. Anonymous users only have access to selected projects which are marked as public. They can view all the issues, but they cannot make any changes, so it's read-only access. If they want to add a new issue, for example, they need to log in or register a new account if that option has been enabled. In version 1.1, it's possible to register without administrator's approval, so, the, so a new user will immediately get full access to the public projects. This is very useful for bug tracking systems, where everyone can view existing bugs and registered people can submit new bugs or comment on the existing ones. These are all the most important features of WebIssues version 1.1, so thank you for watching. You can download the latest version and find more information on webissues.mimec.org.